Hello everyone. This is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, ZTube. Today we are going to discuss the process costing example using the weighted average method. So here is the example. Z Corporation manufactures zealous coffee. Z adds all materials at the beginning of the manufacturing process. Now I underlined this sentence because this is important. When you add material is going to determine your number of equivalent units, all right? So please keep in mind because in processes we can use, we can add materials at the different point in times, whether we're using a job order costing or process costing system, it's not necessary that you add all the material at the beginning of the process. You may add some material at the beginning, the remaining material at the end or some in the beginning, some in the middle and some in the end, right? So for example, if you are manufacturing beverages, you may add mixing material at the beginning of the process when you are mixing, right? Sugar and, you know, the liquid. Uh, while the bottles can be added towards the end, the packaging can be added towards the end. So you add materials at the various point in time, okay? So here we have a beginning working process, which is 30% complete with 40,000 units. Uh, the cost information is provided below. And then during the period, you started 76,000 units and you completed 82,000 units. The ending working process is 70% completed. Now, units are not provided, so you need to back solve to calculate the ending working process units. Direct material cost incurred during the period and the conversion cost that you added during the period is also provided. So now move on to the problem solving using the weighted average method. So let's start with the weighted average method. So now here we have a beginning working process inventory. So step one to calculate physical units or whole units. So it stays the same. We have 40,000 whole units here. Okay, and then it started during the period. We started 76,000 units during the period. Add them together. So we are, we are going to add cell C53 and C54. Which is your beginning working process and it started during the period that's going to give you the total units to account for. 116,000 units. Now we move on to completed and transferred out during the current period. So that information is provided. The number of units completed and transferred out are 82,000. And then working process ending. Now because working process ending is not provided and working process ending is 70% complete, so we put that information here as working process inventory 70% complete. is not provided, but we know how many units um, we need to account for, which is 116,000. We calculated in part one. So the accounted four units are going to be the same, 116,000. Now, if we subtract 82,000 out of 116,000, right? These are the total units to account for, 116,000. If we subtract 82,000 from it, we'll get the ending work in process, which is 34,000 units. Now we need to calculate the number of equivalent units for direct material and for conversion cost. So for direct material, because all of those units are completed and transferred out, right? And the weighted average method ignores whether you added material in the previous period or not, you are still going to account for all the material that you have added on all the units that you have completed during uh, the process, during this period. So we are going to account for all 82,000 units. Same thing with the conversion cost. Remember FIFO is, was different. FIFO, if, FIFO assumes that if you already worked on some of the units, then you're going to work on the remaining, right? So if you completed 30% of the work, then you would work 70% during this period. However, in the weighted average, 
you're going to include all of them. So 82,000 units. For ending work in process, ending work in process is 70% completed. And the question says that Z adds all material at the beginning of the process. So all 34,000 units are going to be added at the beginning of the process for direct material. And for conversion costs, because the ending work in process is 70% complete, so we are going to do 0.7 or 70% off our 34,000 um, in the whole units, which is cell C58. So this will give you 23,800 units. Now we are going to add the equivalent units for direct material and for conversion cost. So this will be some of your D57 and D58. That's 116,000 equivalent units for direct material. And let's see what we have for the conversion cost. So this is cell E57 plus cell E58. That makes 105,800 for the conversion cost. Now we, so the cost part is completed. Now we move on to the, the, the units part is completed. I'm sorry. Now we move on to the cost part. The cost part deals with part number three, number four, or and number five. So these are the steps that we are going to deal with during our, this session right now, the next one. So let's put this in currency, it's a dollar amount, and you're going to add a comma style here. So let's get back to the problem here. So part number three now, work in beginning process for direct material. And the cost is provided for direct material, uh, beginning process inventory. The cost for work in process, direct material inventory was 40,000. The cost, the conversion cost, for beginning work in process was 95,000. All right. How much did you add during the current period? You added 34,000. 90,000. You added $90,000 for direct material. And the question says 90,000 is added for direct material and 157,000 is added for conversion cost. Okay. And this gives you the sum. So we are going to add them vertically and then we are going to add them horizontally. So this will be your D64 plus D65. 130,000 in total. And this will be your E64 and E65, 252,000. Now we're going to add them horizontally. So this will be your D64 plus E64. And this one will be a D65 plus E65. And now you can either, either add vertically or horizontally. This should give you the same answer. So we'll add C64 plus C65. All right. If you, instead of that, if you add D66 and E66, this should also give you 323,000.
There's something wrong. 135 plus 247,000 looks like 382,000. This has not calculated it correctly. Let's see what is wrong with this. Oh, because we added C54 by mistake. I added this is C64. All right, so 382,000. Now it makes more sense. Now add a dollar sign here. Let's see. That's a dollar sign here. Okay. Then we move on to number four, which is calculating cost per equivalent unit. So this in, in your FIFO method, instead of using cost incurred to date, we only use cost added in the current period. And we divide that by equivalent units, right? In weighted average method, you're going to use the number you obtained in the total cost to account for, and that you're going to divide by the equivalent unit. So what is the total cost to account for? For here is 130,000, okay? And for conversion cost is 252,000. Now you're going to divide this by the number of equivalent units, which is 116,000 for direct material and 105,800, that's coming from part two for conversion cost. And now calculate the cost per equivalent unit. So you have D68 and divide by D69. Same thing you will do for conversion cost would be E68 divided by E69. This will give you cost per equivalent unit for conversion cost and for direct material. Why is it not displaying this? All right. It's an error here. E. So E6, why I put 67, 687. E68 divided by E69. So 2.3. Eight. And now step five is the cost assignment part, right? You're going to use the information you calculated in part four, which is $12 for direct material and $238 for uh, conversion cost. And you're going to multiply this with part number two, which is completed and transferred out and work in process ending. Right, so completed and transferred out units are 82,000. And the ending work in process are 34,000 units. Okay, so here, completed and transferred out equals to, so we, it's D57, right? 82,000 times cost per equivalent unit. So times D70. Okay. Same thing we do for the ending working process. Now it's D the ending working process, if you go in part two, is in column D and row 58. So D58 is the cell. Why did I put two Ds here? So D58 is the cell and then times, again, it's D70 or the cost per equivalent unit. Now you do the same thing for the conversion cost. So the conversion cost um, in part two, the, the equivalent unit for completed and transferred out were 82,000. So that is E57 times E70 cost per equivalent unit. And then you do 
E58, which is the ending working process from part two, times E70, which is the conversion um, cost per equivalent unit, all right? So you get this. Now you add them together to calculate the total cost to account for. So this is your E73 plus E74 will give you 252,000. And then you have D73 plus D74, 130,000. And then you add them horizontally. So you have D73 plus E73, and you have D74 plus again D73 plus E73. And here we have D74 plus E74, right? 94,000. We add them together equals to D C73 plus E plus C74. So 382,000. And as you can see, this 382,000 is same as what you calculated in part three. The total cost to account for and the total cost accounted for is the same. Same as with the direct material, 130,000 in part three. And same as number 530,000. 252,000 in part uh, is a conversion cost, total cost to account for, and 252,000 is the total cost accounted for in part number five. So that matches, that means you have done your uh, calculation correctly. Same thing is with the equivalent units. If you see part two, the accounted for 116,000 match with 116,000 to account for units. And that completes this problem. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates and other videos.